thank you so thank much you. for joining me Thanks today. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you actually because I'm such a fan. No, you're so sweet. <laughs> you are the face behind the blog Harper and Harley. Mm -hmm. So it's a fashion and beauty blog. It's so great. I love thank it. Thank you. I, I genuinely love going there oh. pretty much on a daily basis <laughs> just to check in to see what you're doing. Brilliant. But it's very inspirational and you've also um, been on TV. You were mm -hmm. a part of the fashion blog show on the E! Network, yeah. which is awesome. Also, big fan of that show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and your palette, let's talk about your palette, mm. which is black, white, and grey. Yeah. And the occasional neutral, denim, <laughs> yep. khaki, yes. camel, and navy. Okay, so it doesn't really go out of that. No, never. And in honour of you today... I'm wearing black and white. And I'm really liking it. <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot. We're drinking green tea today. Mm -hmm. Do you drink a lot of tea? I like herbal tea, yes. And yeah. is green one of your favourites? Definitely. Yeah. Peppermint, green, ginger. Do you yeah. drink a lot of tea? Uh, I drink a lot of coffee. Do ya? Yeah. I, I cover for two a day, max. Okay. Otherwise, I'll get a bit crazy. Yeah. Of course, I work in fashion, so mm -hmm. I'm all over the whole blogger blogosphere and what bloggers do. But for somebody who doesn't understand mm -hmm. what your job is, how would you, in a nutshell, explain that? I think a blogger's role is to kind of connect the fashion and the designers with actually wearing it in real life. So, you know, do you go to a site like mine where it is an edited selection of what's going on in the fashion world and what's available in store and what's available online because there's thousands of stores and thousands of products and then being educated on what designers to choose from or how to wear something or how to style something in an everyday situation so going to work or having like lunch with your girlfriends so it's all about making it real and making it relatable it's like i've just rolled out of bed i've popped this on yeah. and i'm going out to get my morning coffee yeah i always like to think of it like you know your best friend's old sister and you're like oh my god she's so cool i want to wear everything that she wears i think a blogger should be like that so who do you look up to oh, i've got so many good girlfriends in this business and so i love like carmen from current with her or katie from modern legacy or mandy from uncle fox like i'm just lucky to be surrounded by women who are in the same business as I am and that are really inspirational. What I love seeing is that you are genuine friends with these girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even from watching Fashion Blogger Show, I was like, they actually really like each other yeah. and they get along really well. Yeah. And it's not really a competition. Everyone sort of has their own lane and their own style. Exactly. Their own aesthetic and, and you kind of all come together and inspire yeah. each other, I suppose. It's all about, you know, protecting um, the industry we're in and like making sure that we're giving bloggers a good name. You know, because sometimes it's hard for people to understand what we do and also to respect what we do and know where we sit in the industry as well. So it's not, it shouldn't be about girls competing with other girls and women competing with other women. It's all about supporting each other and making yeah. sure that our industry survives in its own channel. That You can see the tables turning a bit on that whole girls with girls, you know, like girls yeah. supporting girls. And yeah. it's so great to see. I think that's what fashion bloggers were so good at doing too. It was five girls or six girls all together and there is no awkwardness there's no like comp competition or anything like that it's all we're all in it to be girl bosses and yeah. you know yeah succeed well now we know what you do mm -hmm. <laughs> um take me back a little bit to because you started your blog when you were 19 yeah <laughs> so what was happening before you were 19 tell me how you grew up in your family <sighs> I grew up in Brisbane um very suburban kind of normal like upbringing. Fashion was never kind of my forefront until my late teens and late high school. And then all of a sudden I got addicted to like style.com and like watching the fashion shows online and I just got obsessed. Went to uni, studied marketing. And then only halfway through that degree, I was like, kind of digital's kind of happening. And so how did it actually start? So did you see other bloggers doing that mm -hmm. and thought I could, maybe I could do that yeah. and then you just gave it a go? I don't know how I came across blogs, but I remember being at uni and there was like Fashion Toast mm -hmm. and La Fashion and like all the old school yeah. um, kind of girls. So I was like, who are they and what are they doing and how did they start their blog? And I'm like, well, what's stopping me from starting my own? Can you remember your first post? Yeah, it was actually an introduction. It was like, if you're into this kind of thing, then that you might be interested in my blog. And it was like referencing the Olsen twins mm -hmm. and um, Emmanuel Alt. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all like black, white and grey, but I didn't know back then that, that was kind of my style but I do still like my first post. I'm really proud of it. Oh, that's yeah. so good. Yeah. At what point, what, what was the tipping point? So I started in 2008 in December and then no one read it for like two years. And But then I moved to Sydney 
um, because I couldn't find a job in fashion in Brisbane. It's a bit tricky. So I started working for Westfield in like the digital marketing department. Mm -hmm. And then I attended Fashion Week. I think the biggest moment was when I joined the Felt Network, which was uh, the first like blogging platform to house multiple blogs at once. Mm -hmm. So it was like all of us housed on this one platform and it kind of just put all the eyes on us. And so that was kind of the first tipping point where we were separated from the masses of bloggers. When you're back here yeah. and you're 19 <laughs> and you know nobody and you're living in Brisbane oh, yeah. and you can't even go to a PR, Completely. Yeah, what do you wear? What Do you just find something from the local yeah. and pop it on and, and Completely. I think creating outfits from your own wardrobe is the best starting point because that's what the, most people are doing at their home um, or going to Zara or ASOS or, you know, the products that are affordable and just making sure that you can convey that into conversation where it's realistic and like you can buy and you put together an amazing outfit from ASOS. Mm. You know, all it takes is a bit of creativity. Mm -hmm. And you still shop at ASOS? Absolutely. Yeah, I see that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I can get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And so, what do you? What's your opinion on this whole online thing? I mean, it's mm. it's sort of taken over the world. Oh, it's crazy. Really. From when I started, there was no Instagram. I started when Twitter had just started and. Facebook was a thing, but, like, whatever. Like, it's just from my journey when I first began, blogging wasn't even an industry. So I've kind of evolved with it and ridden the wave, and then I organically got to where I am. And so hearing that girls want to grow up to be a blogger, I can't really relate to that yeah. thought process, but good on them <laughs> I know it's like it's a fun job that's yeah. for sure but you have to have passion behind it and you have to understand what you're actually getting into mm -hmm. and what your role entails it's not just the fun how do you feel about the fame because you're a little bit famous now <laughs> I find that so weird <laughs> it's just a it's just a situation I just found myself in mm -hmm. um when people come up to me and want photos or that kind of thing I'm just like this is very strange. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming up and saying hi because I really appreciate that. Yeah. But I'm so separated from it. I just have no connection with the situation I'm in. And you as well as a lot of the other girls on Instagram and, and the blogging world, the aesthetic is so perfect yeah. throughout the whole <laughs> thing. You go to your page and it's just one beautiful shot after another yeah. after another, all in black, white and grey and sometimes nude and yeah. <laughs> khaki. That is discipline. It's also thinking of balance as well because I find if I go to someone's page and it's too like, edited, it just all kind of blurs into one look. Yeah. So you have to kind of keep it interesting at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to think about it and you can't just put up anything at any time. You have to be like, okay, I've had a selfie there. I can't have a selfie now for another, like, two rows yeah. or something ridiculous. So mm -hmm. you do have to think about it and plan it out. Do you have a plan or is it a bit <sighs> sort of you kind of look at your page and, and even it out that way? Yeah, I kind of look at it and go through it. Um, it depends on what my latest blog post is because that's always funneled through. And then you have to be like, okay, I need like a picture of my shoes just to even it out a little yeah. bit. So there's things that happen on the fly. Do yeah. you find yourself just constantly thinking about it? I think else? so. I think because um, I was working at home a lot and then I just couldn't find that line between home and work and just all merged into one. And that's just not a way I don't think you should approach it. So I moved into an office space. And then once that happened, I was kind of like, I drive home and I'm done. Mm -hmm. like maybe an Instagram, but you kind of know what you're going to do. You are quite the expert at separating your online world to your personal life. <laughs> it was that a conscious decision. I don't have an Instagram for myself. Like I kind of approach social media as a job mm -hmm. and that's it. Content is, well, you are a content um, giver. Do you have like a whiteboard with all the months of the year and when all the seasons are. Oh my god, are. I wish. No, I think it's a, like obviously outfit posts are a regular content um, post that I will put up there. But you can't just put up an outfit and be like, yeah, cool, look at my outfit. It's got to have some sort of like reasoning behind it or some sort of educational purpose behind it. Like how to wear a white t-shirt three ways or, you know, how to style this. And you have to actually give them back something yes. rather than just being like, I'm wearing this. Do you like it? Yeah, like, yeah. that's not going to work. Yeah. So you kind of have to think about how that post is going to get written as well. Mm -hmm. And what have you got to say to the people <laughs> who think blogging is a really easy job? I'll try it. And we'll see how long you last and we'll see how many people read it. How do you um, combat the 
the negativity because, like you said, you're putting it out mm-hmm. to the world wide web. It's really not just your next door neighbor. It's anybody who's anybody who's anybody can can see what you've just yeah. posted out there. Do you do you get many negative comments? I'm lucky in that I don't, and I think also you kind of have to educate your followers on what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Mm-hmm. So if someone writes something on your Instagram feed and it's quite brutal, mm-hmm. what happens is people see that negativity and that negativity grows. So at what point did you go, okay, the blog is, that can't, um, this is just so much work, I have mm. to do this full time. Do you know what, it took me a long time to get over the fact that like I was going to be a full time blogger mm-hmm. and I didn't know if I wanted to jump into that too soon because I was so young I don't didn't feel like I had enough career um, experience in the real world so I was working at Westford for a couple of years and then I worked again at Mania Mania the jewelry brand mm-hmm. for a couple of years so it took me <laughs> many years of blogging and working full-time to then be like actually I need to pull the plug mm-hmm. but I could have I should have done it a bit earlier but at the same time I don't regret it mm-hmm. because it gave me so much experience that I've now put into my side what is it that that allows you to become a full-time blogger? I mean, um, we do a lot of work with affiliates. So the biggest one we work with is Reward Style. Mm -hmm. And they've kind of, I think, changed the blogging industry. They're worldwide. They have pretty much all the online stores connected up to them. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're the main ones that bloggers do use to kind of support themselves. Mm -hmm. So you have the affiliate um, Mm -hmm. commissions coming in. So that's when you put up something Mm -hmm. online, someone can click on it and then then they purchase. They don't have to purchase exactly what you put up. They could buy the similar look or they could find something else on the site they love. Then all of a sudden you can can support yourself through that. Yeah, and you know that what you're putting out there is converting into sales. You know that you can actually convert and that's the biggest question mark against like what bloggers do and if they actually are worthwhile an investment for a designer or a brand. So once you know that even in yourself, you're like, oh, no, I can actually sell a product. So mm-hmm. yeah, how about you invest in my company rather than a magazine or a traditional media? Right. How important are numbers when you're a blogger? Game changer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just... And you need to know it. You need to know about Google Analytics and all about all the, mm-hmm. you know, the traffic and everything like that. How tech savvy have you become? <laughs> You're just all uh, over it or do you need a bit of help? I, need, I, I think there's all these things to learn still. I mean, different platforms keep changing, new social media keeps coming through. So it's hard to keep up to date and know everything and it's impossible to know everything. It's all about self-learning as well and I would love to like learn how to code and love to like, you know, keep pushing myself. What is your favourite part of your job? I think it's just being able to turn my passion to a career. That's the dream. <laughs> yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. Tell me some of the hard bits. I think it's just like not being able to stop and not being able to like go on holidays and not have to worry about like, you know, updating Instagram or updating your blog. You can't actually ever take a break mm-hmm. and that's definitely the hardest part. You know, you have to constantly produce the content. And you're the face of it as mm. well. Like there's nobody else that can do it. Yeah. You're it. Yeah. So it has to be you. <laughs> yeah. When you're thinking of your content, you're, are you in the heads of your readers? Are you like, what, what is it that they want? Or is it a bit of a mixture of what do I love and what, what do they want? I think I've always approached in like, um, what do I like? Mm-hmm. Because I think that's worked so far. And if I started to think too much of what they're into, things will get confused. And it is about education, isn't it? And it's like, oh, here's a pair of pants and here's how you can wear the new yeah. pair of these shoes or you can layer yeah. it up or, or whatever it is. Like how to wear the new trend of the season, mm-hmm. which might be a bit like scary and you're like, oh, should I even be wearing this trend? But if you do it in the colour palette of black, white and grey, mm-hmm. then it's so much easier to get away with it. It is. Mm. I'm actually shocked how many combos you can do with those colours. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> They are my favourite colours. Yeah. So do you literally not buy anything with colour? No, it makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like I cannot even deal. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you judge others if they wear colour? No, the thing <laughs> is when people, other people are wearing colour, I'm like, that looks so nice on you. Like it suits their personality. Yes. But on me, I get all like uncomfortable and you can kind of read it on my face. Have you ever been in a situation where you've like maybe been asked or? When you go to like shoots and things like that, sometimes the rack of clothing isn't quite reflected in yes. your personal taste and you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> how, how do I, I deal yeah. with this situation? But um, I've become better with, you know, 
laying the land and mm-hmm. the lower land kind of thing. You just bring your own suitcase of stuff. <laughs> I'll style myself. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the nitty gritty. Like, what is a day really like? If you're doing a shoot, mm-hmm. tell me you've got like the boot of your car open. And oh, you're, like, absolutely. Legs out the window. <laughs> <laughs> we all get changed in our cars. Yes. It is the funniest thing. Or some girls. They don't have a car, so they actually get changed on the street. And I was like, how are people oh doing this? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And, they, and the, you guys are quite well known. So people are going to be like, oh, I just saw Sarah on there yesterday. <laughs> I definitely get changed in the car. But <laughs> Good. the worst is when it's hot and you're doing a winter look and you're trying to put leggings, like leather leggings on. It, you're just perspiring <laughs> and you just like think cool thoughts. <laughs> have you had any regrets? Like if you maybe if you look back on your blog or actually I think I remember reading one where you posted you're like I, I actually you put it up and then you oh, sort of yeah. went back and said I actually wouldn't have styled like, styled like yeah. this on this day. I think sometimes you just don't look in the mirror or like you don't plan it out properly and then you're like oh god is that how it actually wore I'm like ooh. Yeah. um so you know you just have to call it and mm-hmm. not try and be too perfect and be like actually look if you guys are trying this at home can you just change what i've done here right <laughs> just be honest about it i think yeah. people will appreciate it yeah mm. definitely and tell me how do you take care of your mind body and spirit in a <laughs> world where everyone is looking at you because yeah. that's your job really mm-hmm. and it's all about how you look and you know, love it, hate it, judge it, whatever, you're putting it out there. How do you, in your quiet moments, take care of yourself? I think because I've grown up with the blogging industry and how I didn't approach it from a fame or kind of intense kind of, it just happened organically. So to find yourself in this situation now, I'm very much removed, but sometimes you do get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty good at like switching off and just not even thinking about how many people are looking at me mm. I'm just making time for you mm-hmm. schedule it in it's the most important thing otherwise you're never going to do it I spend just a lot of time with my boyfriend and our dogs yeah who have you got around you do you have a team of people a person what yeah I feel like it's like one of those things that just slowly grows and you're mm-hmm. like oh actually no I do have a bit of a team mm-hmm. um I'm lucky to have signed with chic blogger management mm-hmm. so I've been with them for a couple of years now and I just could not do what I do without them they just coordinate all like the sponsorship opportunities mm-hmm. and then I have like an assistant that helps me with like affiliate linkage and all that kind of time consuming mm-hmm. projects and then today was actually my first day with an intern oh great so we now have an intern oh Wonderful. that's awesome yeah yeah and we will intern right or yes. on, on fashion so we've all done our time and I think mm-hmm. interning is such an important part of the process but making sure that it's the right fit for you as well and make sure that you're getting something out of it Mm-hmm. Now, you are a business girl. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you would have had to have made some pretty hard calls when it comes to business. We've all had to do mm-hmm. it. Have Have there been times where you've just had to make a, a pretty heavy call on business stuff? Yeah, I think it's when you get presented with an opportunity from a brand and you see what they're offering and you're like, well, that's quite nice. Um, but you actually have to say no because it is so far from what is on brand for you and what is going to help your business succeed. You have to say no Yeah. if things aren't right. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to lose integrity very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. That is one of the most important things in your field is that mm-hmm. integrity, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because people are looking at you for a genuine answer mm-hmm. on what you think of things and yeah. the minute it sort of looks once like, you have a product to your face, yeah. there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Have you had any pinch me moments where you're just like, can't believe I'm sitting here, can't believe I'm meeting this person, can't believe I'm in this place. I think the biggest thing was doing fashion bloggers and having then watching yourself on TV and Mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. It's so hard to watch yourself on TV. And then the feedback was like, oh, I didn't know you sounded like that. I'm like, neither did I. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) neither did I. I I don't. Sarah, this is a new thing I'm trying mm-hmm. on a team with Jules. Not to put a negative spin on anything, but there's always something we're whinging about mm-hmm. and there's always something we can find to celebrate in life. <laughs> Tell me what you're whinging about right now. Oh, I think it's just the emails. Mm-hmm. Like, I just need them to just pause <laughs> while I get through it and then I can come back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, and what are we celebrating? Oh, we're moving into a new office. Oh, great. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, really exciting. You're just going to deck it out? Yeah, 
I yeah. can't wait actually. I can just see marble, grey and white. There's concrete, concrete and like white walls yeah. and lots of natural light. Awesome. So yeah. Congratulations. Mm. Thank you. Sarah, this has been so nice. It's been really lovely. I've loved, Thank you. Loved talking to you. Let's do a cheers to you. Oh yeah. In your new oh, office and you. your world domination. Yeah.